Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel or welcome if this is your first time here. In today's video, I have some more outdoor cleaning. Right now we are working on the driveway, doing some power washing, and we'll also be moving inside and doing lots more picking up and just getting cleaned up. But if you are new here, I'll go ahead and introduce myself so that you know who you are cleaning along with today. My name is Michelle. I'm a mom of two little girls and my husband is named Chris and he is the one helping power wash the front driveway. I do mostly cleaning motivation, but I also throw in some organizing projects here and there whenever I get the chance. So if you enjoy that type of content and you enjoy this video, then make sure that you hit that subscribe button. And if you really enjoy it, then click the notification bell and that way you will get notified whenever I post a new video and you can go and check it out right away. But I will go ahead and get started. So right now we are pressure washing our driveway. So Chris is using our surface pressure washer. We've used it in the past last couple of videos because we pulled it out of storage so that we could um, clean up some stuff in the backyard and now we are just cleaning up the driveway it had been a while since he had done this last and usually you know you'll get like grease stains or something or oil spots from the car sitting in the driveway or in the last couple of days it has been raining so much so we have a lot of dirt so you can just see how good of a job that this surface washer does So with this surface washer, there's actually a hose that connects it to the actual pressure washer that we have. And underneath, it just is like an intensified pressure washer. So it does a really, really good job cleaning. I have mentioned in a previous video that this is actually, the pressure washer we have is called a Vortex pressure washer brand. And it's actually a commercial grade pressure washer. So this surface washer is from Northern Tool. And if you do a lot of outdoor cleaning and stuff or have a large driveway or patio space, then we absolutely love this. Next thing that we are going to do is actually use that surface washer to wash out our rugs. So the small rug that I'm pulling out now is the our bathroom rug and the larger rug is actually the rug that was in our living room. So in a couple videos back, I mentioned that I got a new living room rug and you can just see how discolored and dirty this rug is. Even if I shampoo it with our Bissell shampooer, it just does not get all of the stains and all of the dirt out. As good as using a surface washer. Now, the only downfall with actually using the surface washer on a rug is that because it is so powerful, it can possibly, and it's done this before to us, leave like streaks in the rug. So it cleans it very, very well, which you'll see in a minute. But one, it doesn't make it as soft. So if it's a really soft rug, it kind of takes that um, texture away and it also can leave streaks sometimes. But this rug in particular is already three to four years old. So it's already been power washed several times before. So it's already not as soft. So right now my main concern is getting all of the dirt out. Oh, you come. 
here I'm going to go back through it one more time before moving over and doing the smaller rug. Yeah, I know that. Now this is a smaller rug in our bathroom and I'm just gonna go over it a couple times too. Now that that's all clean, we're gonna leave it out and let it dry. We will also move on to the backyard. Like I said, it's been raining on and off for several days in a row. And the night before, we actually had some people over and had a crawfish boil. So you're probably watching Chris right now and thinking what the heck is all of that juice and what is that pot? So if you are from the South, like Louisiana, Texas area, then you probably have heard of crawfish. Some people call them like crawdads, but if you have had crawfish before, leave me a comment below and let me know. So I feel like if you are familiar with crawfish, you either absolutely think they're so disgusting or you love them. And if you don't know what they are, the best way that I can describe them is that they are like little lobstery type things um, that I know this sounds gross. They like live in the swamps of like Louisiana area and you basically boil them like shrimp with all different types of spices and seasoning and corn and potatoes and sausage. And basically you peel the tail off and there's a little piece of meat in the tail and that's what you eat. But the season is almost over and it is somewhat common down here to have like get togethers and to have just what we call like a crawfish boil. So basically the night before we blew up the kid pools and we had a little crawfish boil get together. I told you guys that we like to hang out on the back patio. We like to be outdoors. So that's what we did yesterday. And now we are just cleaning up all of the toys. Um, the kid pool and everything that's in the yard and because it rained overnight the rain just makes everything so muddy and just so messy so here we're washing off the blow up kitty pool it just has grass and mud all over it so we just put it over the table we're just gonna hose it off so, so while we were doing that it basically started raining again so we decided just to since we got most of everything done we'll just pack it up and then I will move on to the inside as most of you guys know, having people over or entertaining always leads to kind of a mess. I tried to pick up a lot of it the night before, so it's actually not too terrible, but I do have to clean up and pick up all the dishes and everything in the kitchen. So after doing like three deep clean videos in a row straight, I feel like I have been able to at least maintain or keep up with lots of the mess in the house. But as you guys have been watching some of my videos, I have gotten lots of comments that either you are purchasing a new house or you have already bought a new house and you have lots of stuff to do. So first of all, I just wanna say congratulations to any new homeowners or if you recently sold your house and bought a house, then congratulations. Kinda got me thinking that I've never really talked about our, our house journey. Um, this house is our second house. Uh, the first house that we bought 
we bought back in 2010, I believe. And um, it was during a time when the housing market like completely crashed. So we got a really good deal. We built that house too. It was fairly small. It was under 2000 square feet. And again, we live in the suburbs, so you can get a lot more house for your money like living way out in the suburbs opposed to living like in a bigger city i'm sure that's true for a lot of the other cities in the u.s but here in texas the housing is really affordable that's why lots of people move here and typically when you buy a house you're paying more for the location than the actual house that's what's going to cost a lot whether your house is really big um, it can still be affordable um, it's just dependent on the location but anyway, with our first house, again, that one was also way out of the city. We got it at a really affordable price and we stayed in that house for about five years. So that was a spec home, meaning that it was um, a new build, but it was in the process of already getting built. So whenever we went to like pick out um, some of this stuff, so you can go to like a design center and pick out things that you want to upgrade. Um, we didn't have any money to upgrade anything. So we just got this standard of absolutely anything. And um, yep, so we stayed in that house for five years before moving because we wanted to be in a better location. So then in 2015, we found this builder and this was also a new build. So we got to pick out the lot and i just wanted to give advice for anyone who is doing a new, new build who has never done that before it's actually a lot and trying to like sell your house and buy your house at the same time where your old house is contingent on the purchase of your new house is also very stressful or at least it was for us but one of the biggest things that i learned along the way was that when we went to the design center you can pick out like different levels of things that you want uh, we I didn't like any of the kitchen granite countertops that they had so basically they give you like a little square foot size of a piece of granite or a cabinet or whatever and you're supposed to make your decision on like you're supposed to plan your whole kitchen and your whole house on like these little sample sizes well um, the design center person told me well why don't you just ask them to go to the granite yard and pick out your slab because the different slabs can have specific like rust stains in them and they each slab is very different so I asked our builder I was like can I go to the design center and pick out our own slab of granite that's gonna go in our house and he was like oh I hate when people do that because then they try and change the granite and it costs a lot more and we really don't want you to do that but since you already got all the information then you can go to the granite yard and pick out your slab so of course when i went to the granite yard i found a different slab that i liked more so than the options that they offered at that design center so i um, talked them into letting me switch the slab so i know a lot of people have commented on my granite and that's um, just a tip that if you are doing a new build, maybe you can ask your builder if they'll allow you to go pick out your personal um, piece of granite that's gonna go in your house. Or if you do quartz or whatever countertop you choose. That's just something I always remembered because we did not do that in our first house, so I just thought that I would share. Don't you wanna have some fun? Now I'm on to tackle the playroom. The playroom is always a disaster and it's okay, it doesn't bother me as much as it used to anymore because it keeps the kids entertained and I know that they are relatively safe when they're up there playing so that I can go and get some other things done, then they come and completely destroy the playroom. So I do have the girls come and help me every once in a while. I don't always film it when they help me. In this case, I did. I'm actually calling Sailor to come upstairs and help me pick everything up before she's allowed to um, go outside. So they do help me a lot of the times. I don't always film them helping me because sometimes they end up just making a mess opposed to actually getting everything put up and usually probably like 90% of the time I'm in a hurry so either I am picking up and filming so that I can finish whatever else I have to do that day and as a mom of two little ones sometimes it is easier if I can just hurry up and get it done 
so that we can enjoy the rest of our day. One thing that I am really excited about for the playroom is that I broke down and ordered the nugget, the little nugget couch for the kids. I have seen so many people get it and I was thinking about, so Savannah likes to climb on things and she scares me so much. She's had so many bumps and bruises and bloody lips just from like climbing on things and falling off. So I wanted to get her like a little play gym. That way she could like enjoy all of that. And I've seen so many people get the nugget. It's like a foam couch and it's kind of expensive. So I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. And after I thought about it, you can actually mold that nugget into different things where your kids can climb on, they can sit on, um, and all different types of things. So when I thought about it that way, as opposed to like getting a little gym, but something like soft that if she, they were to climb on and fall down, then they hopefully wouldn't get hurt then I decided to go ahead and get it. Now, the, I didn't realize that it takes like 10 weeks for them to ship. So I literally just got a notification right now that it finally shipped. So it should be here soon and I plan on setting it up in um, one of the next couple of videos. Back to this, when I wake up in your bed and regret everything I did Like a hangover, but leave me needing one more fix, she said Shut your mouth and kiss me Hey, don't waste your breath, cause you know what I'm feeling Midnight's closing in, and I won't wait for you Don't think about it twice, we'll wait by second guessing And I want you to know Yeah, shut your mouth and kiss me In the parking lot, in the backseat Stop now Just close your eyes and kiss me Like you mean it, you're a bad dream But I'm into it now I shut you my son So I did a major organizing project in this playroom about six months ago and Savannah's second birthday is coming up in July, so I was just thinking about possibly cleaning out some of the toys. Even though everything is relatively organized, I just feel like I want to get rid of some of the smaller toys. And if you guys have any great ideas for birthday presents for two-year-olds, then leave me a comment below with some of your suggestions. I've already mentioned earlier in this video that it has literally been raining for days and I the sun kind of came out for a little bit that day and I was walking outside and when I went to the playroom I found all of this stuff in the playroom and or the playhouse not the playroom and I had been looking for some hair stuff my brush all of their blankets have been in here and have been getting rained on for days. I was kind of upset because that blanket was special to us. That was the blanket that um, at the hospital, whenever Savannah was born, they wrapped her in that knitted blanket. It was volunteers at the hospital had been giving them to newborn babies. So there was just blankets in there and I was kind of upset. So I'm just taking everything out and then I plan to wash everything. Luckily, none of it got ruined. And also luckily, we cleaned out all of the sand that used to be in there. Now, if you haven't seen um, our deep clean, our outdoor deep clean video, you'll see that that playhouse, we had just cleaned everything out. There was sand all in it. There was mildew on it. And we were able to get it all cleaned up. 
but I'll link that video down below in case you missed it. While washing clothes, one thing that I've seen and I've actually used a lot of before is essential oils, either like in my dryer balls or in um, my laundry detergent. And I am super, super excited because whenever I was doing all of my laundry, I got my box in from Simply Earth. This is their June subscription box and it is so cute. They have little stickers with the person who actually hand picked, um, hit, picked the box out. I thought that that was so cool and it really just shows their personality. And another really, really cool thing about it is that they donate 13% of their profits to stop human trafficking. And I absolutely love that. So I'm gonna be completely honest that I'm not or was not a big like essential oil person. I do have like a couple oils that my mom has actually given me. But with this whole subscription box, I was super surprised with all of the different uses for oils. So I think that I'm really, really going to start liking using essential oils throughout my house now. So this is the June recipe box and it came with four full-size oils and a lot of additional stuff that you need in order to make the mixes. Each month they have a different theme and this month's theme was garden and summer. And this also came with six different recipes. So the recipes that actually came in this month's box was a citronella floating candle, garden spray which keeps like the bugs off of your plants so i'm actually going to be doing that in one of an upcoming video because we're growing some tomatoes and stuff in our garden um, a peppermint infused oil summer loving lip balm so an actual lip balm bug roll off which i'm also going to make later on in this video and the surfs up diffuser blend which i'm also going to make later on in this video so everything I just opened up was the big bonus box and now I'm actually opening up the recipe box. So this is what actually includes the four oils and all of the stuff that you need in order to make the recipes. So what's really cool is that that big bonus box comes free with the purchase of the recipe box. And the absolute best thing about this whole kit is the price. Y'all know how expensive essential oils can be. One little tube of essential oil can be up to like 50 to even $100. But this entire box that I just received, y'all, is only $39. So the whole value of this box is totaled at like almost $200. So to get all of this for $39 is like an incredible deal. Top of that, I have a coupon code that I'm going to link down below that actually gets you $40 off your second purchase. So if you go ahead and order a subscription box for $39, then that means next month's box with a whole different theme, you pretty much are getting for free. So it is actually an incredible deal. And I actually have a lot of fun making some recipes later in this video. So thank you so much, Simply Earth, for sponsoring this video. And for now, I'm gonna get started on the laundry. Before I start my laundry, I'm gonna actually use the Good Vibes essential oil that I just got. And I'm gonna put a couple of drops into the washer load, wherever you put the detergent. I forgot what that thing is called. So I actually just put in a couple drops just to see if it would make it smell any better. And what I noticed when I took the clothes out is that it didn't make that much of a difference when I applied it to the washing machine detergent. But when I, I'll show you in a second, whenever I move my clothes over to the dryer, I have these wool dryer balls that I use and I typically apply a little bit of essential oil to those and when I do that it does make a big difference in the way the clothes smell they make it makes it smell really really good and fresh whenever you take your clothes out of the dryer feels like you're falling now who is to blame wishing you
So here I'm actually unpacking some things. We had actually just gotten back from, it's called the Kalahari Water Park. So we took the kids there for the weekend. It was actually Chris's birthday. So I told him that I can't take him to Vegas, but I can take him to the local water park. So we did that and we had an absolute blast. So I am really big on like spending money on experiences not like a whole lot of money we actually we got this from a groupon but i just mean things in general i like to spend quality time go places i feel like when we are able to get away for a weekend then it just allows us to have more quality time together instead of just sitting like in our normal routine where you would think that since we were are pretty much together all the time that we'd be sick of each other but it's more so like doing chores catching up getting schoolwork done making sure baths are done cooking dinner you know all of the just everyday stuff where life just kind of passes you by without like stopping and enjoying and I know you don't have to go somewhere to just stop and enjoy something. You could just go on a walk or just go to the park and just like take some time out of your busy day to just relax and just like spend quality time together. I just like to do that away from home so that we can just like disconnect from our world and just go somewhere and just enjoy it. So me personally i don't like tangible things i'd rather chris take me somewhere opposed to like getting a necklace or getting something like that for my birthday or or anything like that so i appreciate those things i just also like traveling and i already know the number one thing that people automatically think is that you have to have money to travel everywhere you go is expensive but it really doesn't have to be like our weekend trips i found at a discounted rate from a groupon um, back in march we went to a water park on groupon we went during the week so i just took off work so that we can get that discount there's lots of ways to find things that are local or close by that you can also do at a discounted price but we also budget money to make sure that we have time for those types of things and we did take dave ramsey's financial peace university a couple of years ago and that was so helpful so maybe in an upcoming video i can talk a little bit about that if it's helpful but if you're not familiar with it it's just different ways that you can get out of debt and how you can save and how you can just be better um, financially you are, you are, you are. So here are my wool dryer balls and this is essential oil. I'm just gonna put like one to two drops on each ball and you can see that it's just a tiny bit. Somebody asked me a long time ago if the oils get on your clothes and honestly, they don't. I've never experienced it with oils getting on the clothes because I just put like a couple drops and then kind of rub it in and then um, it's never stained or anything like that. Every time I'm down here, you make me smile. You're the solution. When we got back from the weekend, I noticed that Chris is so Chris uses the Keurig coffee maker and I use the Nespresso. And I noticed that the water in his coffee, ev everything was like green. And I'll show you in a second. And I was like, I really hope that you're not drinking this this coffee look at how green this water is and um and here it is right there at the bottom can you see how disgusting that is and so he's like oh no i wonder if the um all of the hoses are molded or you know whatever so he just gets to draw and starts tearing apart the cured coffee maker so i pulled out the camera to kind of show you guys and just to see if you've ever been interested and in what the Keurig coffee maker looks like on the inside um, he took it apart so that we could see but none of the hoses or anything on the inside were bad we think it was just because the water had been sitting there for a while that it must have just turned green or the mildew built on the bottom so I'm just cleaning it up and then we will put it back together
the last thing I wanted to show you guys, I told you that I was going to make a couple recipes in my recipe box. And like I said, I was really excited about this. So the thing, the two things that I decided to do was first make the bug roll off. And that recipe required 10 milliliters of the fractionated coconut oil. So that's what I'm pouring into the little, um, thing there and then the three drops of citronella oil and then three drops of lemongrass oil so like i said this is kind of my first time to ever mix and and do anything with essential oils but um i just thought that this bug roll off was super cool i didn't know that you could make different things with these but i put them like when we go outside we just have the worst mosquitoes everywhere our you know, I live in Texas where it is super humid all the time and summers and it floods and it rains all the time. So mosquitoes are out everywhere. So this is just super cool because um, you can just like rub it on to, you know, your neck or your arms or whatever. And, and without spraying like an enormous amount of the mosquito oil that kind of just smells terrible. Then I decided to just make one more recipe that was super easy, took less than two minutes, and it's called the Surf's Up Diffuser Blend. So I do have a essential oil diffuser. I hadn't used it in a while, so I decided to just mix this recipe together, which was, it just consisted of some of the Good Vibes essential oil, the lemongrass, and the mandarin oil. So it tells you the specific amount of drops to use, and then it comes with the little stickies that you can label it. So I decided to go ahead and mix those oils together, which that that's probably my favorite scent, and um, just add it to my diffuser. So another last thing I wanted to mention that if you do become a subscriber for the recipe box, then you also get free access to all of their essential oil hero course where you can learn how to use all the different oils. So be sure to use my code in the description box below for free $40 gift card off your second purchase. Thank you guys so much for watching and be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in my next video.